welcome. This is a video series uh, that continues through my principles of 3D modeling videos. Uh, this is a video by Andrew Klein where we're actually going to take a look at building a hand using a box modeling method with polygon geometry. Now before we actually get into Maya, I want to examine some features of the hand that I have available in this image. The hand itself uh, has a very specific structure in the palm. We're going to build this from a cube but one thing to notice about it is that there's a subtle arch along the top of the hand with a high point coming right around the middle finger and the low point coming, of course, beneath the pinky. The hand's going to bulge a little bit on the sides and it's going to bulge more towards the thumb section on the bottom area and bulge out a little bit more on the pinky side on the top. Also because of the way that the radius and ulna attach to the metacarpals in the wrist, there's usually a little bit of a diagonal line cutting across the wrist section. With the relative heights of the fingers, we want to examine uh, some of the changes that we need to make for all five fingers. The middle finger, of course, is always going to be the longest, and the pinky finger is always going to be the shortest. But we have the pointer finger and the ring finger. Now, these two fingers can sometimes vary from person to person in which one is longer. About 85% of the time, you'll find that the ring finger is actually longer than the middle finger. But again, there are some individuals who have a longer pointer finger. So, just something to be aware of as you're building this. Now, finally, we have the thumb. And the thumb itself, uh, in this position in this photo, is actually stretched outwards to the side. You can see how much it is stretched because of the sort of uh, really sort of high crease dolling that you see from the internal carpal bones uh, of the hand. Now normally we wouldn't be seeing a lot of that if this hand was in a resting position. So if we were to take this hand and just shake it out and let it relax, you'd probably find that the thumb was hanging underneath the hand, not really stretched off to the side like this. And I just want you to keep that in mind as we get through building this form. Well, let me move this off to the side and we're going to start taking a look inside of Maya at uh, our different methods of working. Now, we're going to be working with polygon geometry, so I suggest if you're in a different uh, Windows menu set, just switch to your polygons, and in your shelf, let's switch to the polygon shelf. I'm going to create a polygon cube, and I'm going to hit the Move tool, move it up off of the grid plane, and grab the Scale tool and scale out its size flatten and elongate it so it's a little bit more like the shape of a palm at least in terms of general proportions. Well the palm has four fingers so we're going to want to add some divisions along this. To do that I'm going to go to the attribute editor and I'm going to take a look in the middle tab, the polycube 1 tab, uh, at changing the values for the subdivision width, height, and depth. Well, I want to cut along this four fingers. So along the width, let's give four divisions. That'll be one division for each finger. To round this out, subdivision's height, we can set this to either two or three, depending on how dense your polygon count needs to be. Now just note that a value of four width and three height is going to essentially give us you know, roughly 14 or so divisions coming across the back of the model. That can only be a problem if you're really trying to keep your polygon count very low. Well, I also want to look at the depth, and I think a value of about 4 or 5 is what we're after. I'm going to go a little bit higher poly and switch this to 5, and I think that's going to get exactly what we're looking for. Well, I'm going to hide that attribute editor for right now. And what we essentially have is a brick, and that's really not what we're after. So my suggestion in looking at this is first that we come in and round this form out, that we take our vertices and start altering this to the curvature that we're after. I've jumped into the top view, and I will hit 5 to make this smooth shaded. And I'm going to go to the vertex component mode. What I want to do now is grab selections of vertices. I'm dragging a selection over vertices so I make sure I get the vertices that are displayed underneath this. And I'm going to try and alter the curvature 
of this hand so that it reflects the diagram that we looked at just a second ago. So there's that curved top line. Let's bulge this a little bit along the side, specifically a little bit more on the bottom on the thumb side. And on the pinky side, let's bulge it out a little bit more at the top. For the wrist, let's go ahead and take these values, scale them together a little bit, and see if we can also rotate them in that last little section to make sure that we've got a little bit of a diagonal. And I'll jump back to my perspective view. But again, it's still very brick-like. So I have two suggestions to help us get around this. First, to get rid of some of this hard shading that we have, let's select the model, go to Normals, and choose Soften Edge. That's going to soften out some of these shading creases. Then let's select the model, and let's employ the Sculpt Geometry tool. Now you can find this tool in a couple different places. One is underneath um, Mesh, Sculpt Geometry Tool down near the bottom. And the other one is on the shelf and the icon looks like a mountain with a hula hoop and a little red arrow erupting out of the top of this little volcano. Well what I want to do is I want to double click on this tool so that it opens up the tool settings window at the same time. Now this tool has several values available for me uh, and it's a brush which is essentially going to allow me to paint and sculpt onto the form. I have operations that allow me to pull geometry outwards or push inwards. I can smooth or I can relax. Well, what we want to do actually is we want to take the smooth sculpt parameter, which is the middle option, and I'm not actually going to sculpt with this. I actually just want to soften it all out at once. To do that, I can hit a button underneath Sculpt Parameters called Flood. And if I just hit Flood maybe two or three times, it's going to round this out from a brick into something a little bit more soft and rounded feeling, which I think is more what we're after for a hand shape. And this is what I'm going to start off with. Also, this is the back of my hand, right back here. So I'm going to select these two back faces and then hit Shift Period, which is the greater than key on the keyboard, which will expand my selection to all of the back faces, all 12 of these back faces. It's just going to be quicker to select two and hit one hotkey than try and select 12 faces. And I'm just going to delete those out because, honestly, they're not needed. We're going to make that into the wrist later on. Well, we're pretty much ready to start extruding out our fingers, uh, and that's what we're going to cover in the next video, creating our first finger here. But before we do that, let's see if we can just adjust these opening edges a little bit so that we have some room for these fingers to fit. I think that's probably going to do it. Let's also see if we can take some of the vertices along the bottom of the hand, back along the wrist section, and pull this down. This is going to help us more closely reflect the fact that the arm coming out of this is going to be a little bit more circular than the shape of the hand itself. So a couple little tweaks, and I think we're good. We'll pick up in the next video.